Yes, lads, we've got a new series idea on the channel, which we're trying today. We are trying a Celta de Vigo rebuild. So we're going to start with the first, well, like first portion of the uh, gameplay save. So uh, we're just picking our style of our character. I don't know why. I, I just like having a character with a flat cap because I think the hair on this game looks absolutely horrendous. So, um, yeah, we're going to pick the uh, the flat cap. I don't know why. I've just done it for every single save so far and it feels weird not having it. But, um, yeah, we can see that the default club is Norwich City. Unfortunately, we're not doing one of them saves and I'm not changing his, his actual clothing because does it really matter? I don't think so. And I thought this is the perfect sort of club to do one of these saves with. I haven't seen anyone do one this year, like a proper Celta Vigo rebuild. I've not seen any of the big uh, YouTubers or career mode enthusiasts actually have a crack at Celta Vigo. So I thought, you know, I I'll, I'll give it a bash. See if we can do anything with them. And obviously, they're like a mid-table team in real life. So hopefully, by the end of the series, we can at least get them trying to win a couple of trophies, even if it's just a cup. It's a five-year rebuild. So um, we'll see what we can do and try and make them at least a little bit more of a of a force in Spanish football because they're just mid-table and they've been relegation uh, well, as little as a, like two or three years ago. So their best players, obviously, Iago Aspas, the former Liverpool and Sevilla striker. But yeah, we need to uh, we need to see if we can fix this team because they're not a bad side. They're really not a bad side. Obviously, there's, there's a little bit of work needing to be done. So um, we will start by uh, doing the... Well, I mean, why don't we do like an initial press conference? That'd be lovely to start off with. If you could actually do that, but you know, we're welcomed by the Spanish press. Obviously, just the default basic thing which FIFA do now. They haven't changed it at all, but we'll see the team before we start. Season one. It's a very, very weird team. It's like mixed with youth, it's mixed with like just experience and talent. And it's quite a good team. So obviously, Aspas is the best player, as I say. They've got good players like Renato Tapia. They've got Denis Suarez, formerly of, obviously, Arsenal and Barcelona. They've got Nolito, used to play for Manchester City. Kirby used to play for Benfica. They've got a decent little team all together, if I'm being honest. So uh, that is the team we're using. We're going to start with our first signing of the save already. And we're looking at Oscar Mingueza. Not played as much as he'd have wanted to in real life this season for Barcelona. I don't know how many appearances he's made, but he's not made, made many. And he's got a decent release clause, but we'll offer Xavi £10 million. And Xavi snapped our hand off. And um, he will be the first signing through the door. We need to agree a little a little wage for him as well so we can have him on board. He's only like a 74, but he's 22, so he's got plenty of experience to grow. And I want a little bit more like a youth-centered one, as well as it being realistic. So first signing of this save already, Oscar Mingueza. No complaints there. 40k a week. That's pretty much what he's on at Barcelona, I can imagine. Probably he's on more, to be honest, because Barcelona stupidly overpay their players. But um, yeah, not a bad signing whatsoever. And he's pleased to be joining us. So we have signed him indeed. And now Frances is our next signing we're looking at. And uh, obviously we will agree a fee with him from Real Zaragoza. We'll ignore the contract rubbish because I don't need to see it. £4.7 million is the agreed fee. And now we'll have a look at the next player we're bringing in. As well as uh, Frances. And it is of course another young winger from Spain. And it is Nico Williams from Athletic Bilbao. So yeah, £5 million we offer... That's not the real Bilbao manager, I don't think. And they will indeed accept it. So that's another signing that we can uh, we can be thankful of. Great signing, £5 million. 71 rated. And uh, this is the business we've done so far. So I've missed a couple out, obviously. I don't need to see everything. Video is long enough as it is. So Williams for £5 million. We've bought him from Bilbao, as I previously stated. Uh, Udi Les Palmas was the next team we raided for Maliero for £3.6 million. We also bought in Frances, as I said, from Zaragoza, the young central defender. Again, we're going for youth. We sold Aidu to Severe for £11.6 million. Loaned out a few players. Sold Nesta Araujo to PSV. And Kevin, what a name Kevin is. And obviously Mingueza was the final signing for £10 million. Probably our record signing this season it'll end up being. And um, yeah, not, not too bad so far. So uh, we'll see how uh, the team looks before we start the season off completely. So this is the team that we're looking at playing, but obviously... You don't play every game, do you? You simulate, so it's probably going to change it. Because this game's just... It's an absolute shambolic affair, this game, sometimes. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what we're looking at in terms of the team which we're starting. So it's a pretty strong team, very youthful team. And we'll see what we got up to in the first half of the season. So um, we're not really doing very well. There's a little bit of an understatement, but we're on one win, seven draws and ten losses. And we're only on ten points. 
So I've got a lot to do and um, I mean, we'll have to zoom along quickly and see how, how we're doing the second half of the season now because we're doing terribly so far. So the second half of the season, where do we finish up? 18th place. That is very, very worrying. We've been relegated in the first season. That is an absolute shambles. Oh dear. The uh, board are not be happy with me. So see how we did from January onwards. We drew the first game against Betis, beat Sociedad, beat Osasuana, beat Sevilla and then lost in the cup. How, how have we won all them games? in January and then dropped off again. The first half of the season was absolutely terrible. Oh, there we go. We lost to Vallecano, drew against Cadiz, lost to Levante and then lost against Atletico Madrid. But we had a decent March, one or three games in March. We lost loads in February and sorry, in April again. What are we doing? We're an absolute terrible team. Look at that as well. We lost our next four games and then beat Sevilla. So... Not great. I don't know what to say. We've already been relegated and that is a bad start. Let's see if we keep our job. Hopefully we can do. And um, the board at the end of the season, we were hoping for a clearer commitment and better results from you. Um, I'd probably say the same. We didn't really do great. Uh, I, I, I think we'll leave it at that and move on to season two. A little longer than a few minutes later. So we're back for season two. Stylized as season two. I wouldn't do that stylized after. And uh, we're going to have a quick look at our budget and finances while we're here. See how much we've got in the kitty and see if we can improve the squad. The squad needs a few improvements, I would say. It's very youthful, but obviously we're in the Segunda Division now. So we're at £37 million. Let's see what we can do with our first signing of the new season. Look in the free agent pool, actually. And a 16 year old, 71 rated player called Ladic. He's 16 and 7 rated. That is ridiculous. That's like John Bostock back on FIFA 08. Honestly, he wants a release clause. We're not doing that. We have we have so many release clauses already where players leave us. Like, out of the blue. So £300 a week for a 71 rated is ridiculous. And we do agree the fee and uh, contract for Ladditch. Not the fee, sorry. The contract for Ladditch. That's a good signing in my opinion. I'm, um, I'm quite happy with that to be, to be brutally honest with you. And um, after, well, after we sign Ladditch, we're going to look at another player as well. Also a young player, and it's Fresneda from Real Sociedad. We've agreed a £2 million fee for him, and we've agreed like 6 k a week or something like that. There's a 17-year-old right back, a good replacement for Mayo in the future. And then one final signing. Aspas is getting old, so we're looking at this Zlatan Ibrahimovic regen. Pal Bergstrom. Did not say that name right. Oh, Pal, Pal Bergstrom. Oh, I love it, Pal. But uh, yeah, they want £30 million. I can't really argue with that. I'll see if I can argue a little bit more, but I think he's like a 76 rated, so it's not really a bad signing. 13.3 million pound. That seems like good business to me. If you're looking at Zlatan's regen in real life for an actual real player, you're looking at like 60 million pound, and that's just Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac? What am I on about? Alexander Isaac. What the fuck are you talking about, man? But you know, I, I, I digress. I think it'll be a good sign anyways. Three star, four star. I'm pretty sure he's got the same birthday as Latin as well, so I can I can sort of confirm it's his regen. And um, we just need to agree, agree a wage with him now. So I don't know what squad roll to offer him because Aspas is still like an 82 rated. So we'll have to see what we can do. Five-year deal doesn't sound too bad to me whatsoever. £22 million release clause as well. I don't want to do that. Why would I, why would I do that? You're going to be like uh, 85 rated in the next couple of years. So I'll offer him 40k a week to just absolutely confirm in what sort of La Liga team has this much money? I don't have an absolute clue. But yeah, good signing nonetheless. We've got an Aspas replacement anyway. As he was our top scorer last season with 16. I didn't show that because I was just a bit depressed. And then we signed Manuel Lazari from uh, free agent pool, actually. Lazio decided not to renew his contract. He's only 29 or 28. He's 82 unrated, so I'm not, not unhappy about that. Very good signing. This is an actual Hugo Mai replacement. And then one final signing in Andre Lunin to replace the goalkeeper Ruben Blanco because he's not good enough. He conceded like 75 goals last season. So uh, we have agreed the contract with him. It was like a £10 million fee and that's not a bad piece of business either. So we'll see the team before we start with the uh, season simulation. Obviously Mayo comes out of right back for the uh, better Lazari. We're going to put Lunin in goal as well, I believe, instead of Ruben Blanco. That's the team. It's not a bad side, is it really, that? So uh, with the team, we will simulate the first half of the season. We're actually top of the league, unsurprisingly. 54 points from 22 games is not too bad at all. And then um, we've also got a big, a big announcement in this uh, second half of the season. So you can see how we did it in the second half of the season. We won every single game in January. 
We won every single game in February apart from against Rayo Vallecano. And we're also in a little bit of a cup run. So uh, we lose to Malaga. That doesn't matter. We're still, we're still doing well. I, I, I can still imagine we've won the league at this rate, which isn't too bad. And um, we're in the cup final. We've got FC Barcelona in the cup final while we're in uh, Liga, Liga Santander C, B, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. I really don't. I should have really looked at it before I uh, got relegated. So, um, yeah, we are going to attend the press conference for this game. Barcelona is such a massive game. I can't believe we've got to the final of the Copa de España. That is ridiculous. So we are going to do the press conference, as I say. I'm just going to charge through it because I want to improve the morale of the team as much as I can because I'm playing on legendary with this team against Barcelona's team. So we, I want to do well. I want to do well. Obviously, Minguez is against his former team as well. And um, I just, I just want, to, I want to win. We're not going to see the lineup before anything like that, like you do on the career mode series. But we are going to just try and try and get through this cup final because it's such a horrendous opponent to draw. Barcelona are absolutely majestic on this game. Not so much in real life, but on this game, they are. And we will start with the first highlight. So 10 minutes in, Bergstrom gets the ball. Rolls Longley really well. And he puts us 1-0 up to put us in the lead in the Copa de España final against Barcelona. So not too bad start there. But then later in the game in the 23rd minute, Barcelona get very fortunate to respond. It comes back out to Young. And look at the deflection. It's off Mingueza as well. And he makes it 1-1. Then in the 32nd minute, the keeper fumbles one in front of Griezmann and Griezmann makes it 2-1 before the break. And we're under the cosh now. But later on in the game, we will get another chance in the 60th minute. Nico Williams is played through. He's got to Stegen to beat. He's one-on-one -on -one with him and he fires it around him. What a finish that is. Makes it 2-2. We've got it all to play for now. And then he does a weird little Havertz celebration. Then finally in the 72nd minute, Bergstrom's beat Longley again, who's nowhere near him. He's got to fire it past to Stegen again. He hits it front post. And we're 3-2 up against Barcelona in the Copa de España. And that was the winning goal, it turned out. And we celebrate with Denis Suarez lifting the Copa de España. Look at that. We've already won a trophy in the second season and we got relegated as well. We're absolute ballers. The signings turned out to be exceptional. And we are the Copa de España champions. And um, absolutely fantastic results. So that's the first trophy of the save. And then we're also actually got the second trophy of the save. We won the La Liga Smart Bank. That's what it's called. That makes more sense. Makes total sense. But yeah, it, it, it is what it is. A great result. Um, teams relegated. Miranda's and Am Ambrabieta. Oh my God, my pronunciations are terrible. And then we also see that Aspas has got another 16 goals. And unfortunately, he's retiring this season, which is a massive shame because he's such a good player. But he's our, he's our top scorer this season. Iago Aspas, he's got the most goals in the save for us so far with 32. Bergstrom got 12, which isn't bad. Not bad whatsoever. Dennis Suarez with the top assist there. Aspas also got nine assists. He only played 31 games. We ended up with 25 contributions. Dennis Suarez with 11 assists, as I say. And then uh, clean sheets for our keeper. De Tauro has got six in 21 games. So that's as good as we're getting for that. Well, that is the end of that season. We're moving straight into season three. We see the budget for it. Sell to part three, 38 million pounds. It's not improved whatsoever, but we can sign some players with that. I'm pretty sure of it. Not a bad little budget for a team who've just been promoted. And um, yeah, we need to crack on and make some signings then. So uh, we'll have a quick look at the team before we start. That's pretty much what we've got. That's the team which went up. It's a very good team. We shouldn't have been in that division whatsoever. And we'll start by making some uh, some adjustments to the lineup. So um, Ainsley Maitland Niles is the first player we decide to bring an important squad role for your contract. 78 rated, so he's not a bad replacement for anyone in central midfield, centre back, left back, right back, left mid, right mid striker. He's an all rounder, Ainsley Maitland Niles. He's like a poor man's James Milner. But he will be the first signing of season three. And uh, good, good little signing. He's youthful, he's English, and uh, that's what we need in the club at the moment. So uh, that's the start. Then we'll bring in Sergio Busquets for a bit of experience. That's a great signing, that. 20 grand a week for Busquets. That's an absolute bargain. Absolute bargain. So, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. I really am. Busquets is an absolute baller. Still at an 80 rating. And then we've got a couple more players to bring in as well. So, uh, Peterson... 
is a, another young player who's like 73 rated at six, 18, sorry. And he's, I think he's Chilean or Danish. I know that's completely different, but it's one which you wouldn't expect. I'm, I'm guessing with Peterson, he's Danish. But um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get time much offering him a week. So 10K a week, £100,000 signing on fee. You're not going to turn that down. But another good young talent in the team. And then um, finally, we need to bring in a central midfielder because Denis Suarez has, has had his release clause met. And um, we are losing him, which is such a shame. So £25 million is a decent offer. They want a 9% selling on fee, which I'm not really sure about. He's in the final 12 months of his contract, so I'll agree with £27.8 million. I think that's a good little signing, to be perfectly honest. And we'll just have to tie him down in terms of wages now. So uh, the I don't think that's a real face. It doesn't look like a real face. It does look a bit like him, but I guess you can do that with computers. He wants a five-year contract, important squad role. I, I don't think that's a real face. Wow, that's disappointing. £64 million pound release clause. I'm not accepting that because people just pay for it nowadays. And then 50k wages a week. So great signing. Nicola Ravella, welcome to the club. And that's another fantastic signing for this Celta team. And uh, hopefully from there we can just go, we can go up and up and up and up. So uh, we'll have a look at the team before we do start this season off. Ravella's obviously just gone into central midfield. We've made a few changes. The left and right mid are the what they never they never get a game. They really don't get a game, but we're gonna keep them as they are. And um starting goal, Looney, we've got Lazari, Mingueza, Frances, and Galan. Midfield three is not changed apart from Ravella. Then the forward line is what it is. So we start with the first half of the season. We're in 11th place. I don't think that's bad. That's pretty much where they finished in real life. I think it is where they finished in real life. So we're not really improving anything, but we're not getting any worse. And um, just as I was about to like leave January, I realized that we've lost our right midfielder. I don't have a clue where he's gone. So I have to replace him. And I was looking through just random players and Jeremy Doku popped up to me. Popped up to me. That's a really odd sentence to say. And I thought, you know what? He's a pace merchant, but he's a realistic signing. Stad Rene aren't great in real life. They're not a Champions League club anymore. He's in the final 12 months of his contract. And they accepted 35 million, which is stupid money for a player of that calibre. So yeah, we agreed. We agreed a decent fee for Jeremy Doku. A crucial squad role as well. I think Nico Williams went out on loan. I, de I definitely didn't sell him. I think I might have loaned him out by accident. But a five-year contract. I don't want release clauses game. Stop forcing him down my throat. Honestly, I do not want that. And a £24,000 a week contract, which is which is peanuts for a club like Celta. I'm joking, they've not got that much money. But Doku is the next signing, the first one in the January transfer window of Season 3. And we'll see how we finished off the season. So we didn't move whatsoever. I like that. I, li I, like, the, I like the consistency. Consistency is key. I like that. Well, you know, that, that's actually a pretty pretty good upgrade from the first season. 52 points as well. We're not actually far away from sixth. Almeria finished sixth. That's a bit embarrassing for us, but still. Four points behind them. I'm going to take it and say good season. So we're going to have a look at the stats of the players as well. Um, the highest goals this season was Franco Kevi. 18 goals as a left midfielder. It wasn't even in the original starting 11. That's not bad. Bergstrom hits 14 in 53. Again, not bad. 11 in 30 in the league, whatever. Tapia got 12 in the league and from midfield. That's a baller right there. Emre Moore got 10. He was a preferred right winger before Doku came in. He hit 7. So, again, not too bad whatsoever. Good bit of business from me. Pref sorry, appearances as well. 55 for Servi. 53 for Mingueza. Who is Franco Servi? That's ridiculous. Beltran got 9 assists. He's a good player as well. But yeah, that in, in my opinion, that is a very solid season. I can, I can accept that. We did well. We did a good attempt at moving up in the in the world, and um, I can't complain whatsoever. So we'll have a look at the rest of the leagues, the Europa League. Well, not the Champions League. Um, we actually made it all the way to the final. We finished second in our group against Olympic Marseille. Because obviously, we won the cup last year, which I actually forgot about. Um, in the round of 16 preliminary knockouts, over they are, we beat Ajax. How to beat Ajax? That's ridiculous. In the round of 16. We beat Slavia Prague. We beat them 2-0 and 2-1, which isn't bad. Which we're, I mean, at this point, we're, we're, we're gathering a bit of momentum. We beat Inter Milan as well. Now, that's a big boy, that is. Knocking out them. That's ridiculous. Then the semi-fans, we beat Strasbourg 3-1 and we drew 1-1. 
at home. And then in the final, we actually, unfortunately, lost against Borussia Mönchengladbach 2-0. So, you know, there's that. Hey, but that's a good, good uh, end to the season. An excellent season three. And uh, the board, what are they going to say? We were hoping for a clear commitment. What? How can you say that? How could you? I don't think we did bad. Absolute mugs. I don't like the board, but, you know, it's irrelevant. We'll see the budget for uh, the new season. It's the same amount. It's the same amount. £36 million. Pound. Oh, God. We get, we, get for nothing. we get given nothing. And while we're just scrolling through transfer, my dad, I had some terrible news. Bergstrom had been sold in his release clause. Someone met that whack-off release clause of £145 million. I mean, that's good and bad. We've got money to make the team better now, but still, that's a hell of a lot of money and we didn't want to lose him. But, you know, it, it is what it is. We're going to try and uh, make improvements to the team now. And the first one we're looking at is a young 76-rated striker or 74-rated striker. What's his name? Aguiar from Uruguay. Like 17 years old. Great signing on a low wage. The next one is, uh, what's his name? Alpha Adam. Wow, what a boiler. He's absolute alpha. And we agree 35k a week fee for him. He's 77 rated. And then Kyle Walker. We have an abundance of right backs. Hugo Mayo's retired now, but we still have Fres Neda and uh, Lazari. And now Kyle Walker is the next one to join the club. And he's actually, I'd say he's a veteran. I'd say he was a great Premier League player. One of the best ever Premier League right backs, in my humble opinion. So crucial squad role, two year contract, £22,000 a week. That is immense. Great signing for the recovery runs and that's all you need him for. And then um, at this rate, we have one more signing to make. We need to replace the big man Bergstrom up front. We're looking at this guy, 19 years old, 84 rated. I don't even know his regen that is. He won £123 million. Pounds. He's actually one lower rating and he's a year younger as well. So I have 103. They want 133. I hate negotiations on this game. They're so broken. They really are. But we agree a fee for him. That's an excellent signing if we can do the wages as well. And um, we need to make the most of this now because this could be our ticket to a, to a better tomorrow. So we'll assign him the crucial squad role. What a saying that was. A ticket to a better tomorrow. <laughs> a five-year deal. We don't want release clauses. People actually pay him. I don't do it. We've lost like five players because of that. He's on 32k. We'll offer him 60. We'll offer him a, a million pound signing on bonus. And that is the biggest signing of the save so far. Very, very nice. See, I'm keeping it nice and realistic for you. We've, we've, we've sold a striker and replaced him for a better one. So this is the team at the start of the season. Lunin starts in goal. But Walker, Mingueza, Frances and Galan as a defence. Beltran, Tapia and Ravella as the midfield three. And then a really weird strike force of Doku on the right wing and then these two as strikers, Santos and Aguirre. Let's see what we can do with that. That's a ridiculous team for a team like us. So uh, we will have a look very quick at the league table halfway through this season. We are 14th in the league. Not great, but 20 points is better than nothing. And then we'll have a look at another signing we need to make because we've sold another midfielder. Players keep leaving us left and right. It's so hard. I think it was Tapia this time went on a uh, on his release cost like 80 million. So we're looking at Barcelona now. 44 million pound fee for a young midfielder called Nico Gonzalez. I think he's just called Nico normally, but you know, I'll, I'll take that. I, I, I'll, I'll take that. And um, he wants crucial squad role, which I mean, I'm not surprised. He's really young and 82 rated. Five year deal as well. I, I'd, I'd rather tie him down. Doesn't want to release close. He actually wants to stay here. And we'll offer him 100k a week because we can't really afford 120k a week like Barcelona. That's why that club has no money. Now that's not kind, Jerry. But I mean, I just said we're making the biggest signing then and we've just made an even bigger one now. We've lost our left back, Javi Galan, and Mark Kukurea is the perfect replacement in my opinion. He now plays for Paris Saint-Germain, that's where he applies his trade over in France. And how boring must that league be? We're talking to Mauricio, who is unfortunately no longer with us. I mean, he's no longer at the club, that's what I meant to say. And then £64 million is a great transfer fee for Kukurea, to be fair. That is our left back. That is an absolute baller who, for the next season and a half, can push us beyond our limits. So it's a crucial squad role. He's only 26 as well. No wonder Man City wanted him when he's like 24 and an absolute baller. Five-year contract. We don't want a release clause, fellas. We've already said. It's not like Spain on FM or real life where you have to have one. It's FIFA. 56k a week as well. Absolute steal as far as I'm concerned. So we do agree the fee for Mark Kukurea. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled. I really am. 
So uh, that is our team settled. We've replaced the players we needed to replace and the league table looks no different to last season. We're 11th. Oh my days. What are we doing? Real Madrid on 9th to be fair. We've not improved or regressed. We're on 52 points. We've actually lost more games. Oh, that's super depressing. Oh no, actually we've lost the same and we've, we've actually no, we've won less games and drawn more. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. At the end of the season, we'll have a look at the top appearances. So, no Europa League football for us this year since we lost the final. Doku is the top appearance holder, along with Lucas Santos, who's also the top scorer with 19. Doku's got 13. Aguiar's got 9. And Nico Gonzalez has got 4. That's not too bad, really. Assist-wise, who's the top assister? Oh, it's that man again, Beltran. Beltran and Gonzalez, both with 10 each. And then uh, Doku and Santos lag behind a little bit in that regard so that's not too bad it's really not bad whatsoever Beltran's also got the most clean sheets when he plays as well so he's probably our key player that's why he's our captain um you know what I'm actually quite happy with that I'd take that as an absolute win we also got pretty far in the Copa de España as well but um I mean unfortunately for us we won it absolutely had your pants down then absolutely had your pants down then it was just banter and we had a pretty good run. We really did. We beat some decent teams and then we beat Villarreal in the final. What more could you ask for? Literally, that is such a good season performance and um, I'm, I'm thrilled with it. I really am. So uh, the board as well, while we weren't able to achieve all our objectives, they're happy. A satisfactory performance overall. We've, we've won three trophies now, mate. What are you on about? I'd be buzzing off me tartars if, if I'd done that as a Celta Vigo player in real life or manager. FIFA boards are so fickle. They really, really are. But uh, it, don't, it don't matter. It really don't matter. We'll see our, our budget for Season 5, Celta Endgame. We've got £52 million in the kitty. And this is our team. We've got a nice little team. Lunin's in goal. Walker is being replaced by Lazari again, since Lazari is better. Frances needs replacing, in my opinion. So we're going to look for a new centre-back. We're going to have a look for a few new players as well. So I'm not too keen on Aguiar. He's not bad, but he's not great. And this guy's a free agent. He's 20 years old and 85 rated. That is an absolute steal, if I wouldn't likely say so myself. So 85 rated, 20 years old, and an absolute baller in the making. We've agreed a little contract for him, and he's now playing as our new uh, left winger or striker. Also, there's Alphonse Ariola, who can give Lunin a bit of competition. He's also 32 years old, so he's got more experience. A two-year deal is all he requires. Important squad role. No release clause for you, Alfonso. You silly boy. And then uh, the salary is after. Let's offer 40k a week, a million pounds. Why do I always offer a million pound? That's more money than I, than I anticipate it is. But we've agreed it, and that's all that matters. That's another good signing. We shake hands with his grey-haired agent, who's also a manager in some clubs. And then Alfonso Ariola with the real game face. Love to see it. And then we've got one final sign on this little bit, and it's Tony Cruz. 36 years old now, he's an old man. Oh, sorry, he's 35. I've actually just misjudged, misjudged that horribly. He wants a crucial squad role, a three year deal. Do you reckon he'll do that? Oh, yeah, Tony loves playing football. £60 million release clause. No one's going to pay that fee, mate, so we'll do that. And what does he want a week? 40k, £200,000 sign on fee? This is a steal if we are. Oh, yeah, we've got him. Honestly, the, the squad depth this season is it's exceptional. I'm expecting us to push for the top four this year. Hopefully, we can do that. That'll be ridiculous if we can actually make the top four in this save. So um, one final sign, and I think we've got now, as I said, I wanted to replace Frances, and this just made sense. I had him in the Everton career mode, and this guy, 84 rated, Zubel, I've never seen him higher rated than that. We've offered like 40 mil for him, I think, which is pretty much all our transfer budget. He wants a relief because we're not having it, mate, sorry. 28 years old, 84 rated, £100,000 a week. And then £300,000 signing on fee, and he has accepted it. So I've got a new central defender. I'll tell you what, the team's looking tasty this season. It really is. I'm really looking forward to using this. And um, this is what we're going for. So Aguiar is out the team now, unfortunately. Peters is the new left winger. I think he needs to sort out how this team is sort of laid out. He can play left winger, by the way. I'm changing his position in game. Ariel has made the bench. We're moving a lot of players off the bench into the reserves because I like to have a bit of a proper bench. Zubeldi comes down to the left side. And that is our team. It's a, it's a lovely team. It really is. We've got a lot of Spanish in there. We've got a lot of Spanish speakers. We've got like six or seven Spanish players in there. 
then we've got mostly Europe. I think it is all Europe, to be honest. So lovely team. And we will see where we are at the halfway point. So look at that. We're, we're top of the league and we're having a laugh. What a, what a half a season that is. We are absolute weapons. 37 points from 18 games. Seen a bit Barca, you idiots. Oh, we're doing so well. I can't believe we're that, we're that far, far up in the league. It's actually ridiculous. Well, let's have a look at the Europa League while we're here as well. So in the group stage, how do we do? We've got Marseille again. 12 points again as well. At least we threw in that and we've got Club Bruges. So not too bad there. We'll see how we finish this season off. We're actually second in the league. We've got one game left and it's against Valencia. You can see it in the right of your screen. Oh, that's going to be tasty. That is going to be really, really tasty. We're three points above Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. We've made the Champions League, which is lovely. It really is lovely. And we've actually got a chance of winning the league. We've got the superior goal difference, so we must have lost against Valencia the first time. This is what it all comes down to. It really is. Oh, my days. I, I, oh, oh, I've just seen we lost the Copa, Copa Espana as well. I'm sad and happy at the same time. <laughs> Just don't think you could get this sort of drama, even if you tried. It's it's honestly ridiculous. I can't believe it. I I, I don't want to look at. I don't, I don't want to look at. Oh, we, we, don't don't worry. We got knocked out six to Atletico in the Copa de España. That's fine. It's the Super Cup I'm sad about. We lost two one to Barca. Now that is pure sadness. That is. But we have got Valencia on the final day of the year. I, 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 I'm going to sim it. What's it? Ah, oh, 2-0. What a result. I tried to sound surprised and I already knew the result. But, you know, we've won. Santos got two goals. That is lovely. That is really, really nice. We signed him from Valencia, of course. And that is lovely. We win the league. We beat Valencia on the final day of the year. And that just makes me happy. It, it really does. It makes me happy. It makes me smile. But um, we've now... No, I mean... I'm just confirming that. We've now got Barca in the Europa League. Yikes. That's round two. It really is. And um, we're at the Olympic Lyonnais Stadium. Why are the commentary team still on? I hate them. We are going to start with the first highlight of the game. Mingueza wins their header in the 71st minute against his former club. What a header. Mingueza is an absolute ball. I'm not sure about the celebration. That is a bit strange. Only Baffer Timber can pull that off, but that is a wonderful header. What a signing he's been. This is the Europa League final in the 71st minute. It's the only highlight of the game because we've won it. We've, we've won the game. And this is the team winning the trophy. Honestly, I can't believe we've done it. In the same season, we've won the Europa League and the league. I can't believe it. I really, I really, really can't. This is absolutely insane. It really is. I, I don't know how I've done it. Look what it means to the boys. Denis Suarez is losing his nutcracker over this. Because he's not playing for us anymore. It's Fran Beltran lifting the trophy. Oh, dear. It, they look the exact same. Honestly, I, 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 I feel bad for Denis Suarez. Oh, wait, no, I don't. He left us. That is ridiculous. Just a quick confirmation that we did indeed win the league on 81 points. We had a decent goal difference, a decent win-to-loss ratio. Uh, obviously, why do I keep reminding myself we lost the Copa de España? I, d I don't want to. And uh, we do win the Europa League. Though. That, that's the main thing. I say and way too much. Need to get some different vocabulary. But 1-0 against Barcelona. That is that is wonderful. We've got a couple of ex-Barcelona players. The guy who took the corner was Gonzalez. The guy who won the header was Mingueza. And the guy who got the most appearances was Lazari. He's, he's been a wonderful signing. So has, so has the uh, striker, Santos. Peters, 32 goals as a left winger in his first season for his debut season. Santos with 25 takes him into the... Uh, I think he's the top scorer for us so far in this save with like 40 goals. Doku's not been bad. Cruz got eight goals. He's been excellent in the team. Nico Gonzalez, absolute baller. Really, really good player. Assist-wise, Doku's got 14. Beltran's got 10. Kukurea got 14 goals. And he got eight or nine assists. I think he had nine assists. Yeah, it says nine. The, the the screen's very small. I can't really tell. But that is amazing. That is that is really really good. And then he got seventeen clean sheets. This this team is it's a well well oiled machine. I'll tell you that. And this is how we, this is how we lined up all season. You've seen it before. You'll see it again. What a wonderful end to the save. 
that team is exceptional. Really, really good to see. Lunin, 83 rated, great goalkeeper. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is end of the end of the episode. So we've, we've I've tried something new. I hope you guys liked it. I'm not sure if you did, but if you did, I would really appreciate you letting me know by liking or commenting on the video, or potentially subscribing as well. But um, this has been the Celta Vigo career mode, and I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. I will catch you in the next one. We're starting a new series in a couple of days. I'll catch you in it. See you later. Go goodbye, guys.